Oh, hey there, folks. It's this kid again. I feel like I feel like we've seen this before. Maybe maybe just a couple times. Um, that's right. There is yet another iteration of this uh, funny playing Q5 Game Boy Color kit. Um, the difference that we'll see once I've got this thing a little bit more assembled, uh, this one does have a different logo. So I alluded to the logo, um, the logo stuff in previous videos, I believe. Uh, I also even made a short showing some of the functionality of that, uh, but I didn't have one of these at the time, so probably made less sense. Um, but beyond the actual logo on the display itself, there is yet a new iteration of this ribbon cable. As you can see, this one is V2.7. Uh, I don't know specifically what the differences are with this new version, but I can tell right off the bat. Ooh, helps if I unplug that, huh? I can tell right off the bat that the uh, touch sensor is a little bit different. I don't know if this is intended to make it a little bit more reliable or anything like that. Uh, in this Game Boy Color is the slightly older 2.6 version, um, but we're not going to be messing with this one too much. Um, so you get the screen assembly. It's already attached to the ribbon. Uh, it's already supposed to be clicked in. Mine looks like it's not fully seated, so I'm going to give that a little bit of a push. Um, and with the ribbon cable taped to the display assembly. Uh, and then we've also got... And dump that out. Maybe. There we go. Very tight fit. Uh, we've also got these two stickers here. Um, three wires, two of them longer, one of them short. Probably got start and select and then power and then an additional touch sensor that you certainly do not need but can install uh, if you're having trouble with this one or if you want to put it in a different spot. Um, of course, there's no wire for that, but it's not too big of a deal. Uh, the stickers, I usually omit, uh, but the entire point of these stickers is just to try and uh, stem off any uh, light bleed, any additional light bleed. So this big one goes over the back of the LCD, which you would have to peel this off to install. I'm not going to do that. Um, and then this little one goes right up on the front on this little area that sticks out the bottom. You can put that little sticker there. And again, the only point is cosmetics. It's not insulating anything. Um, I, I personally don't like staring at the big logos. And even though I'm going to be installing this in an opaque shell and won't see the logos, well, then it kind of defeats the purpose because you won't see it anyway. So I'm going to skip it, but that's what they're there for. Uh, I believe I've installed it in some of the other videos that I've done on this. Um, I suppose I can look at that pretty easily. Yeah, I did it on this Game Boy. You can see the funny playing logo is, is pretty prevalent. I don't like that, so I'm going to skip it. You can also install it the other way around, but then the logo is just upside down. It doesn't hide anything. So it is what it is. Anyway. For the shell, um, we're going to be using one of these bad boys. Uh, so Funny Playing made some custom NES themed housings. Uh, you've got the front is black, back is lightish gray, and it's got this like uh, NES theme print on it. If you've ever seen the NES themed Game Boy Advance SP, this is pretty much trying to imitate that. Uh, and then this the logo on here is supposed to be reminiscent of that, but we'll, we'll see that more later. Oh, I suppose I should open it, huh? I do not recommend installing any of these laminated kits without a specific housing designed for the laminated kits. Uh, oh, I didn't realize this. I didn't realize it's just gray plastic that's been painted. That's not necessarily a bad thing because the paint is actually shockingly good. Um, usually when I see paint like this on, on, uh, shells, you know, there's like overhangs that it misses or something like that. It's probably not focusing, is it? But 
Funny Playing seems to have that covered pretty well. Aside from the fact, if I hold it like this, you can see that this lip right here is not painted except for right here and right there, I guess. If I put that together with the shell, you can see it from assembly uh, without the Game Boy Color in there, of course. Uh, but I think that's one of those things that if you have to look for it, you'll find it. But unless you're looking for it, you'll you'll never notice that this part is slightly darker black than the rest of the lip. Um, otherwise, seems pretty decent. Uh, same mold as their other laminated housings, so I don't expect any surprises here. Ooh, that got caught on the shielding as I lifted it. I don't even know how I how I did that. Um, yeah, I don't expect any surprises. Um, it is the newer style shell with the cutout and the screw post and the flat battery compartment. Anyway, moving on. I had this set aside for this shell, but I don't I don't think this is actually for this shell now because, well, I've already got screws and IR cover and the cart shield here and the cart shield here. So this is probably for a cloud game store shell and not for me. So that goes back in the box. Okay. And tonight's donor is this perfectly working Game Boy Color that I have already installed and done a video on. Um, normally I like to use new Game Boys for this stuff to, to show a little bit more about the experience as if it were like a fresh Game Boy. Uh, but the reason I'm using this one in particular is because this one has a few um, additional mods that I want to see how they work with this screen kit. So for starters, it has the funny playing rechargeable battery uh, mod in here. And before I start messing with that, Game Boy of course works fine. Not a single problem with it. Um, it also has the illuminated button kit in there that's fine. Um, my single complaint, if I had to pick one, is that I put a rechargeable battery mod in an opaque shell. So when you plug it in to charge it, there's no indication that it's charging. There's no indication that it's done charging. Nothing. You, you have to like pop it open and try and look in that hole that I drilled in the battery compartment, which by the way, I'm going to go drill another hole in this one just because that hole made my life so much easier. Um, so bear with me just a moment. I'm going to go desecrate this shell. I'll be right back. All right. I don't remember what the specific reasoning was, but I drilled it a hole in this shell and it worked out. So I'll drill a hole in this shell too. All right. Let's get this thing torn down. Uh, and because I'm using a Game Boy that is already assembled, um, the power usage tests that I normally do aren't going to be very meaningful here, so I'm going to skip them. Uh, the power usage should be ballpark the same. Uh, I don't know that, like, there's some margin of error with all of my measurements anyway. So I don't know that my measurements would be useful. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip them. And besides, the core of the actual kit is identical compared to the last one. The biggest changes are, like I said, the cosmetic stuff and then the touch sensor itself. I think there's some functionality differences. Uh, like I think you can... On the kit that's installed in this Game Boy, there is no alternate logo position. So if you turn it on and you hold start and select, it doesn't matter how long you hold start and select, it's never going to change the logo position because this kit just predates that. So the instructions are going to be a little bit different, but functionally should be the same. All right. Very careful with these battery connectors, they're extremely easy to damage. And might as well use the same IR cover and screws just so I don't have to deal with any of that. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this desoldered.
forgot to turn my iron on in advance. Oops, there we go. It's not the slowest to heat up. In fact, it's a lot quicker than my previous iron. But I know some of the newer ones are a little bit quicker. But I'm stubborn, and aside from the time it takes to... The time it takes between when I hit the, the switch and when it's ready to solder is already so minimal that it doesn't matter. Anyway. I've only got two screws in this one. Uh, this is the old mold. The, if I recall correctly, it's the first mold, actually. Because uh, it doesn't have, like you can see when I initially assembled this, uh, I had that screw in there and it left a mark on the battery compartment because I was pushing down on things. Whereas the new shell just straight has a hole there so you can install that screw without any problems, but you can also just not install the screw and it's fine. So there's that. Let's get that disconnected. Get that out of there. Oh, and I have to desolder that too. Oh wow, one broke off. That's unfortunate. I'll just desolder both of them. There we go. All right. That's not bad. If you're coming here looking for um, instructions on installing the uh, button LED mod or the rechargeable battery mod, uh, I will have links to those in the description. But we're just gonna we're just gonna keep using this stuff as is. All right. So this was the V two point two ribbon. I guess it wasn't the first one. I don't know. I don't remember what the first one was, but I know it's an older one. Uh, if we wanted to remove this from the shell, I'm I'm not going to remove it from the shell. I'm just going to tuck this stuff in and, and leave it. And then, uh, I don't know, figure something else out for the next time. Um, but what I would do is I would take a little bit of hot air from the front, get this nice and warmed up, and then, unfortunately, the... There's shell here, so you can't really push on the top of the screen. Take a suction cup, and uh, I think I have one. Hang on. I did have one. It's probably on my desk. Um, just take one of those suction cups designed for disassembling phones. Stick it right up at the top and pull, and should come out. Um, if not, these screens are relatively inexpensive, as long as you don't ruin the ribbon too, which should disconnect but anyway let's get this thing tested out so I went over this in my in the video I did on the v 2.6 version of this kit um, but we don't actually need to wire up the power anymore it just works so we just plug it in turn it on Bob Jonti look at that works great when Doing the initial test for these things, I highly recommend actually inspecting the entire screen and oops, and the logos and such. I think I'm I think that touch sensor smacking against the motherboard keeps adjusting the brightness there. Um, yeah, now it's set to the minimum. I can't even see it. It gets really dark. Anyway, I highly recommend fully inspecting all areas of the visible screen. Uh, sometimes there's I, I've seen some people post on like Reddit or such that the, um, whatchamacallit, that there's like a little bit of LCD damage in the logo itself and they of course didn't inspect that because they were only looking at this part, so on and so forth. And it kind of sucks because most uh, vendors, retailers, won't accept returns on these kits once they're already installed because it's kind of hard to say, you know, is that something that was damaged by mishandling? Did it, you know, was it an install problem? Is it a shipping problem? You know, 
what have you. Um, so they don't. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, that's that's why we test it beforehand, and then everything should be good. So we know this works. I'm gonna go ahead and get it installed in the housing. get this stupid there we go oh I totally should have done the soldering for the button controls first but I didn't think about that I'm gonna slip that in under and everything looks good we'll get that pressed down and seated nicely and oh we're good to solder that on I think that should be fine so com I think the com wire can be connected up to the button board, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, it likely goes to um, that C here that I already have soldered to VCC. This serves as battery uh, detection. I think on newer kits, it does a little bit more than that. So on newer kits, you'd want to solder it straight to backlight kit. But again, this is a shockingly old mod, uh, so I don't know if all the support is there, so we're just gonna skip it. Uh, also, I haven't seen any instructions on that from the manufacturer, so I could be making stuff up. Let me double check. Yeah, unfortunately all of the existing instructions are for older kits. I kind of expected that. This thing is brand new, so it is what it is. I will uh, try and ask Funny Playing about it, and um, if I find out, I'll put it in the description or I'll throw it in a pinned comment or something. Um, but we're, we're not gonna get anywhere in this video. Anyway, let's continue with the install here. I don't like soldering on top of the plastic, so I'm gonna slip this card in there. Hopefully give me a little bit of insulation because I want the button controls. And then when I previously did this mod, I used those two vias right up here for some nice clean wiring because originally I think it was in a clear shell and then I transplanted it to the back one, black one and then I installed this thing. But now that the button board's installed, I'm just going to use the solder points right on the button board. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, I believe this has been fixed on the newer ones, but on my specific button board, uh, the labels for start and select are backwards. I don't think it even matters for this kit, but... So this wire goes to start, so I'm going to solder it to the one labeled select. This one goes to select, so I'll solder it to the one labeled start. And again, this is only because my specific button board didn't have the uh, labels correct. I think this shell is going to look a little bit weird with these clear buttons, but screw it, we'll do it live. And by live, I mean obviously this is pre-recorded. You know what I mean. I'm surprised you guys let me install this the first time with all that flashing on the buttons. Go 
goes in there. We don't need any insulation or anything like that. Should be good to go. Oh, there they are. And because we're threading metal into plastic, you always bring the screw snug and then back it up a quarter turn. That way you ensure it's not going to be too tight and it's not going to crack the screw posts. And you know what? I don't hate that. It's a lot better than I thought it would be. All right. I'm going to plug that in. And you see, I have this power solder pad right here. So this is the thing I wanted to test and the reason I'm using this specific Game Boy. Uh, so with previous iterations of this kit, um, if you're using the rechargeable battery mod, just stop following along and continue assembly with your GB. Uh, but in previous iterations of this kit, we needed to have the power switch soldered up. Uh, to provide additional power for the backlight kit. Uh, as of the V2.6 version of the ribbon, that is no longer true. In fact, if you try soldering up the V2.6 ribbon with this battery mod installed, it just straight doesn't work. So I don't have it soldered up yet. You can see it's working. Ooh. Okay, good enough. Ta-da! Set that off. I'm going to leave that plugged in, even though I absolutely shouldn't. But like I said, those battery connectors kind of suck. And the more cycles I have on it, the less reliable it's going to be. So that is another one of the things they changed with the V2.7 ribbon. So I'm going to leave that soldered up because I believe it should give me some additional brightness. Uh, but I know on the 2.6 version of the ribbon, um, that's going to cause some problems. In fact, I really wish I had the uh, extra time and motivation to test this. Right, you know what? Screw it. Let's just do it right now. Is this on? Of course it is. Disconnect it right here. wired up isn't it of course it is okay but this is indeed the 2.6 I think we can just slip that out and then I'll like tape it in or something I don't have to do undo all of that wiring Mm, I better do it. If you have the time to do it, might as well do it proper. You know? Or rather, that that's not how that saying goes. I think it goes something like, if you don't have the time to do it properly, when will you? Alright, so I can leave that sitting right there. 
and there's more than enough slack on those. sketchy. Oh, it's not as tight as I thought it was. There's slack. All right, so if we plug this in, now this is the older 2.6 kit. Let's set the battery in. Boots right up. No problem. Switch that off. Now let's get power soldered up. Horrendous solder joint, but good enough. And we flip it on. Notice we get nothing. It won't come on. And it's not because my batteries come disconnected. Oh, just kidding. Yeah, it was. Ha! And that works. So that was a whole waste of time. I'm sorry. I don't know what problem was going on with the other ones, but... There might be a batch of these kits that don't work soldered up here, but... Unfortunately, I don't have one to test. Installed there. Alright. I'll finish assembly of that other Game Boy afterwards. I've already wasted enough time. I'm sorry guys, I really thought that was uh that was the thing. brightness because why not and I believe the intent with the brightness sensor is if you leave it exactly where it is you can kind of press it up against the shell and then the uh, natural tension in the ribbon should put it nice and flush against the edge of the shell I don't like having it there though so I'm gonna leave it right here, and then I'm gonna fold it backwards when I reinstall the other, uh, the, the rear half of the housing. I'm gonna fold that out of the way though. All right, I've got the screws in, I've got the power switch, I've got IR, I think we're good to go. So the rear half, Got to remove this battery terminal, which is just a matter of pressing that tab down and then it just slides right out. There's a little spring tab on this bad boy uh, that you just have to press down and out of the way. I, I hit it with tweezers just on the edge there. You can kind of press it down and then it pops right out. There's a little hole in the rear housing. Uh, but we want that out of there so that it doesn't cause any issues with the battery. I can slip that in, it's not going anywhere, and now I have enough slack on this battery cable to 
get this thing installed. And then for the touch sensor, I'm just going to approach it from the other side so that I can fold it backwards and then sit it flat. And then to pick up that slack, we can just ta -da. And ta-da! And I'm just now realizing that this doesn't actually solve my initial problem of having no charge indicator. <laughs> um, oops. And again, because we're threading into plastic, make sure the screws are snug and then back them off quarter turn. I put a itty bitty piece of foam in there just so battery doesn't rattle around as much. Uh, but ta-da, it's working. Okay, let's do, let's cover some of the features of this kit. So first off, you can see this is the alternate logo that they have set up. Um, if it looks cut off, that's because it is. At some point while I was mes messing with the touch sensor, I um, managed to switch logo modes. So to switch it back, we just got to find the touch sensor, which is right there on the back of the shell. Shouldn't be able to hit it from the top, at least from where I put it, which means you don't accidentally hit it when there's a game installed. But anyway, if we press and hold on the touch sensor, uh, for a few seconds, we cycle through the um, pixel grid modes, but if we keep holding, even after the pixel grid mode changes, you notice the logo itself changed and now it's fully illuminated. We swapped between, and of course I just unplugged it, so I can't even turn it on as an example, but this one had the normal Game Boy Color logo. Let me reassemble this so we can directly compare. Okay, not fully reassembled, but reassembled enough. So you can see here we've got that's what the normal logo looks like. This is what the alternate logo looks like. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't really have strong feelings about it, but it is pretty neat. Um, I don't know, I like it. If you're, if you're into that sort of theming. We've got, let me kill these lights. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, if we press and hold the touch sensor, which is right here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, about six seconds, maybe a little bit longer. It sw switches between the two modes uh, on the alternate logo style. It doesn't look too bad, aside from the fact that it cuts off the little TM there and then half the word Nintendo. Uh, but on the other one, I don't know if this one has touch sensor. Let's find out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. Nope, this one doesn't do touch sensor. That's unfortunate. But if you hold start and select, should swap over. Ta da! No. There we go. Gotta keep holding. There we go. And that's what the alternate 
the, the wrong logo selection looks like on both of these. Uh, let's just double check. I didn't mess that up. Try the touch sensor again. Uh, okay, so that must be a new feature of the 2.7 kit. You can use the touch sensor to change that, which is probably for the best because I imagine most people, um, if for some reason their kit is configured in the wrong mode, you know, if they don't have the buttons soldered up, it's kind of a crummy ask to ask them to solder up the buttons so that they can get the logo set to the correct mode. But on this one, I believe we should also be able to do start and select. Yep, just got to keep holding. Uh, there, it's that dual function, so you see it flash over, but you keep holding, you ignore it, and then it'll swap over and then get out of the menu. But if we want to get into the menu, if you hold and start and select, it changes to that illumination. I believe we can then use the touch sensor to navigate the options. The first one, I have no idea. I've totally forgotten. I don't even know how to use it. Oh wait, that was alignment, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what's going on. So on the advance option, which is gonna be game on the normal logo, start looks to move the LCD down, or the image down on the LCD in case it's misaligned, whereas select pushes it up. And then we hit the touch sensor to advance the next one. It's the same thing, but left and right. And then the last one uh, is the color of the logo itself. Uh, personally, I think with this logo style, red is going to be the best. But obviously, I want it synced with my buttons. And then we can just press and hold start and select to get out of that. And I believe if we press and hold the touch sensor, we can get into that same menu again. No? No, that just does that, okay. All right, and then on the touch sensor side of things, uh, tapping the touch sensor toggles between brightness levels, a uh, short tap, a medium tap, toggles between the uh, pixel grid emulation modes. I believe there are five. Uh, I'll try and throw some microscope shots up into the description just to get a little bit better of a better view of those. I personally am not a big fan of them. I like them off because you get significantly more brightness out of the thing without actually increasing the brightness. Um, it, it just so happens that when every other pixel is black, you know, you, you lose brightness. Who to, who to thunk? Um, but Anyway, if you're into that sort of thing, it is nice to have, and it does look better than uh, some of the other kits that I've seen. Uh, but it's, of course, the same as the older version. I shouldn't throw that around without a back on it. Um, overall, pretty decent kit. I don't really expect it to run any different than the older ones, uh, aside from the different controls. Oh, and then, of course, a long tap, long press on the touch sensor changes the logo mode now. Let me get flash card. We'll do some testing. So I've got my EverDrive GBX7. Yeah, I know. We'll get to that eventually. Um, I suppose I should do the normal test just in case. Oh god, what was it? I think they're under mat. Yeah. We'll do the scrolling bar test. I don't expect it to have changed, but just in case. Um, same spiel that I normally give when the S in the word scrolling goes across the left-hand side of the screen. It issues an LCD reset command. Uh, previous backlight kits would really struggle with those resets, but that hasn't been a problem in like two years. Uh, so I've been kind of slacking on this testing, and I can see here that it is not a problem here. Uh, some other kits would drop 
up to like 60 frames, which is a full second. That's kind of ridiculous. Some kits would, um, you'd see some visual tearing. Uh, you'd see what they, what is known as jelly scrolling, um, where realistically, that, that that's a totally different thing that I don't want to get into, but needless to say, there are no issues here. Let's reset that, and then we'll do the Legend of Zelda test. So we've got two things here. Uh, first one is we're looking at the uh, overshoot of the pixels because this brown and this green color, uh, when the screen scrolls across, you can see some of the older backlight kits have problems with uh, these two colors in specific, so that's what makes this a good test. Uh, I haven't seen any problems on the Q5 LCDs. It seems to be more LCD based than anything else, but the 9380s really struggle with it and yeah. Not a single problem. The other thing we're testing is original Game Boy games didn't have a way of doing transparency. So what they did instead was they would flicker a sprite on and off as quick as they could. And the older screens just had such horrible ghosting that it resulted in a nice even transparency effect. Fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on your point of view, um, these newer screens have a much much better response time, and so you actually see that flickering now. Um, I don't think Funny Playing is doing anything to uh, try and mitigate that flickering. I certainly still see quite a bit of it, but it's not bad. Like, it's not... It's not immersion-breaking, I think. Um, a better example for the flickering... We're gonna use my Zayas cart here. The entire background of this single game is transparent. So throughout the entire game, I'm gonna try and hold it up to the screen here, but not move around too much. Uh, the entire background just flickers nonstop. That's, that's just the game. It's not great. And, I don't know, looking at it again, looking at the flickering again with this game, it's not, it's not game breaking, but it's certainly less than ideal. I think this game is totally playable, but the flickering is pretty decent distraction. I would choose a different Game Boy to play this game on if I cared to actually play this game. Uh, of course, I'm looking at the preview on the phone itself, and it looks totally fine in the preview. Um, hopefully it's actually capturing all the frames. I've had to whip out my older Lumia 950 before to, to film screens, because phone manufacturers lie these days. It says it's filming at 60 FPS, but really it's just filming at a 60 FPS average. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit less than 60 FPS. And of course, if it's less than 60 FPS, you don't catch the flickering. Uh, but anyway, I've showed it before in previous videos, so hopefully I don't have to do it again here, but I'll review that footage and, well, if there's an addendum, you know why. Uh, but otherwise, I'm pretty pleased with it. I, I didn't expect anything different, uh, but it's nice to confirm, you know? And I like that we have alternate logo designs now. That's that's pretty neat. Uh, I think it would be pretty cool if we could do our own custom logos, but I understand how this is manufactured and I understand how infeasible that is. Um, so while it's a neat to have, I don't expect to ever see something like that uh, because these lenses are printed. You've got the black all around it and then it's just, there's no printing here. And then the screen itself behind the lens is illuminating the logo. Uh, so to program it so that it lines up properly, um, like you saw when it's set to the wrong logo mode, it's cut off, etc., etc. And then when we're actually in the menu, you know, it's nice and lined up. Oh, I can't, I can't do that because I have a game in. Um, like that, that's just totally infeasible. But I, I, I think it would be pretty neat to have. Uh, but anyway, 
I like it. I think it's pretty neat. I like the style shot. Oh, let's get some stickers. All right, so I have 100% no idea if Funny Playing Shells come with stickers. I don't, or the Game Boy Color ones specifically, I don't think they do. Um, but if they do, I lost them. Check the listing. <laughs> uh, other manufacturer shells do come with stickers, and I know the Game Boy Advance one comes with stickers, or at least it used to. Um, but there are no stickers here. Anyway, there are several choices. I genuinely really like these ones that Retro Game Repair Shop has, the like the the holographic ones. I think those are super neat. Um, I have more of them somewhere, and I don't want to attempt peeling this one off because. They generally don't survive, at least not without blemishes, and I mean, I'll reuse this shell at some point, so it's whatever. Um, they also have these other stickers that are also hollow, but in the opposite order. These are, of course, Game Boy Pocket ones. Um, there are, I think there are Game Boy Color versions of it, but they both look pretty sweet. But that is the pocket bag, so of course there won't be any color stickers in there. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, there we go. I'm more of the, way more of the hollow ones. Oh, and a serial number. I'll save that though. Other alternatives are of course like these clear ones. Uh, I think Next Stop Please just started selling these. I actually commissioned a bunch from her. They're super neat, but we're going hollow today. I think this color scheme is going to match just a little bit, a little bit better. complete. There are also um, like little serial number stickers you can get. They have the Japanese style ones here, uh, but there are also the US style ones, but I don't have any for pocket. That's what the, or I don't have any for color. That's what the Game Boy Pocket one looks like. The color ones are prefaced with a C, I believe. Um, but basically the same otherwise. And then there are battery compartment, battery door stickers you can get. Uh, I don't have any that are the proper style for the color. But if you don't care about the proper style, you can just get these. Same thing, same finish as the hollow ones. Pretty neat, I say. But anyway, I think that's about all I've got. Uh, thanks to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending this stuff my way to check out. Um, they've always been a huge supporter of my channel. It's always it's always been nice because they they give me free editorial reign on everything that I upload. So if they send me something and I have a problem with it, I can still upload it. Like they're not gonna like they they take that feedback and work it into their business, and I really like that about them. Uh, and so they send me a lot of the new kits to check out, um, and in return I link straight to their store in the description. I think it works out, and quite frankly I've ordered from them a few times before they even knew I was... B before I revealed my power level to them. Um, not a single problem I've ordered from them since, and of course I haven't had a single problem there either. Um, a lot of the people I talk to haven't had single problems with them either, but I mean, I guess at this point, is that really? Okay. Um, I don't know. I guess once you get repeat customers though, you, they, they start paying attention, so the feedback's a little bit, a little bit different. Um, but, you know, if, if you have feedback, please share. I'd love to hear it. Love to rake them over the coals if need be or, or give them praise otherwise. 
Um, but they've been really good to me, and I, I really like the store, so I'm going to link to them. But anyway, they have this new version of the Backlight Kit. I don't know this logo style. I don't think it's available in other colors. I think it's just black. Um, but I think if you order this logo style, they should all be the 2.7 kits, at least for now. Don't quote me on that. Um, I'll ask Retro Game Repair Shop about it, and it'll probably end up in the listing. But anyway, I'll go ahead and shoot a link to this stuff in the description. Uh, thanks for watching, uh, etc., etc. Um, also in the description, I have a link to a website that I maintain. Um, if you're looking at it going, hey, Mako, that's an HTTP link. What happened to HTTPS? This is 2023. Um, it's just a redirect to a GitHub site, which is HTTPS. Uh, but the GitHub site contains uh, links on like all of the tools that I use, uh, both like hardware tools and test ROMs and such. Um, so if you have questions about like my PCB vices and such, I'd recommend checking out the site first and foremost. Um, I do try and keep it up to date, but also on there are links to a spreadsheet that I maintain that has like all of the power usages and like relative brightness measurements of backlight kits and such. Um, lots of information. I highly recommend you check it out. And of course, there's also a link to the wiki site that I maintain that has even more information on every Game Boy and, and all the backlight kits that I know of. Uh, so if you're sitting here thinking, oh, well, Mako, what's the best backlight kit? Well, my first answer to you is going to be the best backlight kit is the one you already own. Don't don't go upgrading stuff that doesn't need an upgrade, you know? Um, of course, he says that after literally just upgrading his backlight kit, but do as I say, not as I do. We're we're obviously not all YouTubers making content and trying to 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 help document stuff. Um, I am, so I do this stuff, but you aren't, so you don't need hundreds of Game Boys and such, <laughs> much as you might want them. Uh, but anyway, that's all I've got. I swear I'm done now, unless there's an addendum, i got to review the footage, but catch you all next time.